just see what you can get off of Reinhardt by itself. The normal summon method, of course. Um, when he's normal, you know what? Honestly, I don't even know. When they are normal. I don't, pretty, pretty boy man, pretty girl guy. <laughs> My friends, what's going on? It's Ben Cap here. I'm going to be showing you some tier element combos. Um, you can see the deck right now. It's just tier elements. So these are things that you want to know, you need to know. Um, I know there's a hundred different ways to play these cards, a hundred different decks, but these are things that you want to be able to accomplish in any build. Um, I'm also going to show a couple things with just a danger card um, because it's something to consider. I do truly feel like dangers can be played in any tier element deck. Um, so I will show you just one thing for dangers, but um, yeah, we're going to show you one card, two card combos that you just need to be aware of in order to pull off tier elements very well. So let's jump into it. All right, guys, so we're starting with just Rhino Heart. Um, you want to know how to use Rhino Heart as best as you can. It's your, your main engine, to be frank. So if you normal or special Rhino Heart, you're going to be able to send a tier element from the deck to the graveyard. I always send Halfness. This is because Halfness doesn't really do much for me on my turn. Um, the other two are way more versatile. Um, yes, if your opponent activates a hand trap that's a monster and you have happiness in your hand, you can mill three. But that's like, you don't want to focus on your mills. You want to focus on plays that are consistent with them, within themselves that are guaranteed, and then the mills be extra additives. So we send happiness. We are going to make Kit Close with the Grino Heart and the happiness in the Grave. Kit Close, you'll probably make every single turn that you play this deck. Um, when you activate Kit Close's effect when it's summoned, you get to add or send a tier element card from the deck to your hand or graveyard. So, um, to show you the first route, kind of like when you're no cards in hand, no fodder in the grave, you can do this option. It is not guaranteed because you're you're going to be milling eight cards, but um, so odds are good, right? But it's still not guaranteed. So I'm just going to show anyhow. So you, of course, could send Merle to the graveyard or your hand. doesn't matter because Kit Close is able to pop herself to bring her out of the hand or grave. So when this occurs, you're able to activate both their effects. You want to just activate Kit Close first, just in case your opponent decides to, you know, attempt to negate something. You're going to get to mill five still instead of just three. Um, so in this case, um, we've milled uh, Shiren and the trap card. So if we just milled Shiren by itself or a different tier element that I could fuse with, we would be able to make Dragospelia from the Kiklos. Um In the instance that you've also milled the trap card like this, or you you know you already have Reinhardt heart in hand or whatever, but just to show you this particular key thing. If I activate Shiren's effect and I chain the trap card as a second chain, I can add Reinhardt to my hand in order to make Clyde Heart. Because that way I have access to Reinhardt as the fusion target. So then we can fuse off um, our three tier elements here and jump into Clyde Heart. So that's the first route. Okay, so the second route would have been you add the trap card to the hand and it's way better than you'd think. You'd set that past turn, right? When your opponent uh, gets a monster on board that is in effect monster, especially one that you want to actually negate and stop, you're able to activate Celiac, target the effect monster so you negate its effects, and then you must send a monster to the grave from the field. So at this point, I will send the Kit Kalos. Its effect goes off, I get to mill five. So in this, in this instance, um, you want to hit a tier element, you want to hit something that you, you gain some, something off of, um, most of the time, of course, you, you will mill a tier element out of five cards and uh, you'll be able to activate their effects. So I'm just going to activate one of them just to show you. Um, it's a guaranteed Dragospelia. So now we were able to negate two cards on our opponent's turn with just the trap card by itself. All right, so next combo is going to be with Instant Fusion. I want to show you what you can accomplish with Instant Fusion. It's essentially the best card in the deck just because it's a one card Kit close without any requirements except for paying a thousand life points. So um, once you get out the kit close, what you can do is send your Rhino Heart to the grave. No effect, right? Because you have nothing in hand in theory. When you pop the, the uh, kit close, you bring back your Rhino Heart. So at this point, you are going to be milling 
one guaranteed tier element. So you're guaranteed to fuse. You have a guaranteed collide heart at this point. You've got the Rhino heart on the field. You're going to be sending one tier element and your kick close is engraved as a third name. So it's a guaranteed collide heart. And then you're going to be milling five. So that's how good instant fusion is. Now, of course, you don't have to do this every time. You might have Rhino heart in hand already. Um, you might want to just use kick close to add the trap card and set up. We want to mill the five and then send our guaranteed because we don't need to send three tier elements at this point. So we would want to thin the deck a little bit and then send five. I'm going to send, of course, again, the Havness just because it's the only one. I, it's the first one I send every time. So uh, we also would have had sent um, two other tier elements, which we don't need to activate right now. Just just showing you the combo. We need our Rhino Heart and the happiness that we activated and there you go so yeah instant fusion one card collide a heart one card freaking anything you want all right so we're sticking with just the one card combos for right now of course you have terraforming or the field spell um you'll be able to add any tier element monster to your hand it's going to be of course rhino heart if you have no cards because rhino heart is your, your foolish burial your armageddon knight whatever you want to call it so when you summon that rhino heart of course same thing as last you're going to go ahead and make that kit close now the difference when you have the field spell on the field is you want to consider the things that you can pop with this field spell. Um, if you're playing branded, you know you can pop your Alibur to get him in the grave. If you're um, if you've got a face up tier element monster, you can pop them to get them in the grave to trigger their card effect fusion, um, stuff like that. So in this instance, why would we want to pop Kid Close? Um, when we have no no advantage, no cards, stuff like that. So the reason for that is I'm able to mill five now without moving any other resource from my hand or graveyard. So because I don't have something in hand, if I was to add a monster to my hand, say, like I showed you earlier, Merli, and I use uh, Kikolos' effect to send it to the grave and get the Merli out, I had to get the Merli out of my hand to do that. I had to do something, I had to lose a resource to make that mill 5 happen. But in this instance, you're able to, um, say, add your trap card and still mill 5, right? So that's that's something to consider. You want to consider popping your own stuff more often than you'd think. All right, so we're back at Edo Pro because YG Omega is still having some updates and some of the stuff's not working. Um, I wanted to show you with the field spell um, if you have a Kaleido Heart out, what you can accomplish for free. It's just netting a free card. Um, so as I showed you before, I'm going to send the Rhino Heart to the grave. Kid Close is going to pop itself. And of course, this, this is if you get Kaleido Heart out by any means, not by this means. So for right now, I'm not even going to activate Kid Close in the grave. I'm just going to send a different name and get into that Kaleido Heart. So because, again, cards were shuffled into my deck um tier element cards that is um i can pop a card in the field right so if i you say I, i've got no other means to do anything um i, I just summoned collider heart as my last name for fusing i can pop my own collider heart activate its effect to come back and when it comes back it would shuffle an opponent's card and I get to send a card from my deck to the grave. So in this case, I would send the trap card to add a monster to my hand. So in a way, the field spell lets you search twice. I mean, the field spell is super, super good. There's so many utilities. Again, like I said, consider popping your own stuff from time to time. All right, so this is gonna be hand with Foolish and any tier element card can be any one of them, doesn't matter. Preferably, you know, probably the trap card so you can search afterwards, but um. Yeah, you're probably going to play Foolish in any deck that you play Tier Elements in. It's that good. So you can send the Rhino Heart, activate Rhino Heart's effect to come back, and then you have to get rid of a Tier Element card out of your hand. So that's a good thing a lot of the time, because that way, not only can I activate Rhino Heart's effect, of course, because it was special summoned, I also didn't have to normal summon, but I can also activate the Tier Element card that was sent from my hand. So in this instance, you know, there's not a real incentive to do so. Um, to, just to show you an example of something you could do here. I could fuse with Shaylin instead of whatever I send with Rhino Heart. Activate Rhino Heart to send Merli to the graveyard. So that way, instead of going Collider Heart right now, 
when I use the Rhino Heart on the field instead of the Murley and Grave. Now when I get my um, Kid Close out, I you know I could fuse here, but I'm not going to. I can add the trap card to my hand, which again is like guaranteed um, safety measures for passing my turn. Since I left that Merlin in the grave now, I could go ahead with that play to mill eight cards. And why this is good, even if some horrible chance upon the gods that you mill nothing, like that, essentially. <laughs> um, and again, this is the branded version, ignore it. You set the Saliac, and then when you pass your turn, you're still able to send the, Mer the Maru off. We keep changing the names, boys. I don't, know, I don't know what to tell you. You send off your tier element card that's on the field here with the trap card, and now you're able to negate your opponent's monster and fuse. So in this instance, I'd be able to make Dragosepelia um, after I send Merle to the grave. All right, so this is if you have Rhino Heart and Field Spell. It might feel redundant because a lot of time you're gonna be searching for the Rhino Heart with the Field Spell. Anyway, there are two different routes to this, one where you mill and one where you're gonna make the Exceed. So I'm gonna show you the Exceed version because in theory, it's gonna hit every time, it's consistent. Um, it's a really good option. So you're gonna be adding Shaylin here. And this can be done as well if you just have Shaylin and Rhino Heart in the hand anyway. Um, you're gonna normal summon Rhino Heart you're gonna send a different name, activate that, get your kid close out. So at this point, you're gonna activate kid close and you're actually gonna send Reinhardt to the graveyard again. This is gonna allow you to bring itself out and put the Shaylin in the grave. So at this point, we are not gonna activate Shaylin. That would only get us access to a Clyde Heart or Dragosepelia. We're actually going to activate kid close to pop itself, to bring back the Shiren, which then you could mill five here, right? So um, in theory, for explanation, I, I, I wouldn't mill five, right? But it's mill five. So if you hit something, you get a guaranteed um, Dragostopelia. So you're gonna have that out just like you would have before. You could also, again, pop something. You could pop your Shiren, you could, you, could, you know, Alter the play here, depending on what you milled, you could pop it and maybe make like a window or something else. But again, for the sake of this, we're gonna be making the uh, Time Thief. So since I already activated Shiren, I'm not gonna do this turn. That's just, you know, the moment our turn passes, um, if it would let me. On our opponent's turn, at any point, we're able to detach the Shiren, specifically the Shiren and not Ryan Harks, we have nothing in hand. Because this one card that we choose is going to be activated as a card effect, and it will trigger its effect in order for us on our opponent's turn to make a Collider Heart, which is, as we all know, pretty good, right? Boom. So we would shuffle, and we would pop a card. We could also, you know, pop him to do it again, because you yeah. And then we would send a different tier element maybe to fuse, or we could just send the uh, trap card like I did here to add a card to hand. So that's just off of Rhino Heart and Shiren, minus plus or not the uh, field spell. All right, so this is gonna be if you have Rhino Heart and Merle. Could just be Merle, it doesn't have to be the field spell. Um, I just wanna have the field spell here so you can see the extra additives in case you do. So you saw the other version where we would be adding uh, Shiren to make the exceed the other option, as I mentioned before, especially if you're looking for a mill heavy situation, you're gonna send, or gonna normal the Rhino Heart, send the name, Halfness is always my target, I only play one. We're gonna make Kit close with those two. And as I've done before, we are going to send Rhino Heart again and activate its effect to get the Merle out of our hand into the grave. And again, we could activate this and just, just make Clyde Heart, and that's just not good. So we're gonna not use that effect. We're gonna use the Kid Close here, and instead of like last time, we're gonna go ahead and pop it to bring out Merle to mill eight cards instead. So with these mills, you're looking at heart of the cards, you, you gotta hit something, right? Um, Boom, right? You're good. 
we're gonna go ahead and make the Kaleida heart here. So if we have enough fodder, we're gonna leave the Merlee on the field, and I'll show you why. So, um, we'll use our, uh, our Rhino heart and extra fodder that we may have, boom, boom. And right here, right, you might be thinking, duh, pop the Merlee uh, and fuse off. The thing is, suppose we milled Merli to get the Kaleida Heart fusion started instead of Shiren. What you can do is pop your Kaleida Heart instead. Because this way, when he comes back, or they come back, whatever, man, I don't know. You, you can choose which name to send. So you're good. Boom. And then, on top of that, you have extra fodder. Because... Now we've got one extra card in the graveyard that we, that we didn't have before. So that's why you pop Collide Heart instead of your face up monster. Now we've got three bodies on the board instead of two. Super good, right? If you if you mill correctly. Otherwise, you're gonna want to do the exceed play. It's just safer. It's guaranteed. Uh, milling eight is massive, but depends on your deck. Depends on how it's built. There's your example. All right. So like I said, I wanted to be able to show Nessie and like danger stuff real quick because. It's Holy crap! I mean, it's it's really something you can you can consider playing in any any different build. Doesn't matter. Nessie is Aqua, so if I've got a tier element card in my hand, say worst case scenario, let's just you know let it let it happen. Because in my in my package in my version of the package, you'll be playing Nessie and Jackalope, and that's it. Suppose your Nessie gets hit, and you're like, oh crap. Nessie adds Jackalope to the hand. So now you have the exact same amount of resources and the exact same amount of discard outlets as you had before. And then you just want to hope that you don't hit the Jackalope. Because if you do, you'll special Nessie from the deck. It's still not the worst thing in the world because you, you're still going to get a body with 2800 and it's an Aqua. You're going to get extra fodder. Um, but if this happens, you drawing a card... You're sending the tier element to the graveyard, and you get to use the Nessie as material. It's a it's a one card kid close, <laughs> okay? Without normal summoning, um, it's freaking good. And then in this way, like you're you're able to do whatever you want to do. Like even if I I go ahead and do general other plays that I've been doing a little bit earlier, like this is all free again it's kind of like instant fusion so in the instance you just you just hit the um the tier element card in your hand and again you essentially have two chances to do this right you're drawing a card and you're going get close it's crazy so that's why danger needs to get a little bit more attention i was iffy about it at first and i do think that the most appropriate package is just Nessie and Jackalope. I am not playing Mothman. I am not giving my opponent Dark World dealings. I'm never going to do that. That's way too good. Um, these cards just interchange. It goes from Nessie, Jackalope, Nessie. Right? Huge. So that's that. So another example. I mean, if you've got Nessie and you've got a hand like this, like, I don't care which one it hits. Right? I hit Nessie this time. Guess what? I'm going to add Jackalope to my hand. If I hit this... I make kick close. If I hit this, I search. If I hit this, I send it and I search our fuse. I mean, this card is, these cards are very good in this deck. So right here, I'm getting my card back. So Jackalope has been replaced as an upstart goblin at this point, And it let me search a different card. It's like, I just think it fits really well. And um, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh. All right, so this is the last combo I'm gonna show you. Um, I wanted to show you one to two card combos, no point in me showing you full hands. It's something that you're really going to have to practice on your own. I am going to be making other combo videos for like different tier element decks because um, they go in so many things so well. But um, you know, just showing you one to two things, how they interact, small things, minute things that you need to know to play them very well in any deck, I thought was more important. So the last one here, I'm going to show you something like without Rhino Heart in hand. Um, Shiren, like I said, super good. Uh, if you've got another tier element such as Havis or uh, yeah, Havnus in your in your hand, you go ahead and send the uh, 
have this out of your hand with Shiren and you hit some mills, right? I'm not gonna move forward and just be like, oh, you make kit close. Cause yeah, if you mill nothing here, you're gonna get kit close. And then I recommend adding the trap, setting the trap because it's just more consistent. You can, like I said, make Merle, mill eight, you can send Reinhardt, bring the Reinhardt back, send a card, make Clyde hard. We've already seen those things. Um, but just just to show you here in this instance, if I mill Reinhardt out of my three mills, right? Any one of them. I can't activate it because I don't have any cards in hand, but I always, of course, can activate the one I send from my hand. So I will only activate that card. I won't activate anything else. And we're going to go into our Kit Kalos here with the two monsters on the field, not the Rhino Heart. Because of this, now I am able to add the trap card, like I said, super important. This is what you do with or without Rhino Heart. I think it's the best option. But because I hit Rhino Heart now, I can send the Kit Kalos to the grave, activate the uh, Kit Kalos, mill five and the rhino heart to send a card we keep in mind we already used the level three so use a different one and you would mill five hopefully hit more stuff but but just getting you're guaranteed these two cards are already in play and my kid close is in place so if i mill nothing this whole time i will accomplish this play by getting the Clyde heart out and setting the trap card. These two things are good. I've said it in another video that you might see. On my opponent's turn, when I activate this, I'm going to negate a card. I'm going to shuffle a card on their field. I'm going to send a card from my deck to the graveyard, which is gonna let me fuse a card and probably make like Dragosapelia, which then lets me negate another card. See what I mean? Strap card and Clyde Heart are super good. And I would rather have, I would rather have um, Kit Close and the Trap card, these two, Kit Close and the Trap card. I'd rather have those two cards on the field than just Clyde Heart by itself, because let's, let's face it, um, Clyde Heart by itself, your opponent's gonna find some Yu-Gi-Oh way to get rid of it and not have it activate its effect. So that's all for right now. If you know I didn't cover something you need to see, if you have questions about stuff, just comment it. I will totally answer. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Peace.